in an internal combustion engine of the reciprocating type, the crankcase is the housing for the crankshaft. The enclosure forms the largest cavity in the engine and is located below the cylinder, S, which in a multi-cylinder engine is usually integrated into one or several cylinder blocks. Crankcases have often been discrete parts, but more often they are integral with the cylinder bank, S, forming an engine block. Nevertheless, the area around the crankshaft is still usually called the crankcase. Crankcases and other basic engines structural components are typically made of cast iron or cast aluminium via sand casting. Today the foundry processes are usually highly automated, with a few skilled workers to manage the casting of thousands of parts. A crankcase often has an opening in the bottom to which an oil pan is attached with a gasketed bolted joint. Some crankcase designs fully surround the crank's main bearing journals, whereas many others form only one half, with a bearing cap forming the other. Some crankcase areas require no structural strength from the oil pan itself, whereas other crankcase designs do. Both the crankcase and any rigid cast oil pan often have reinforcing ribs cast into them, as well as bosses which are drilled and tapped to receive mounting screws bolts for various other engine parts. Besides protecting the crankshaft and connecting rods from foreign objects, the crankcase serves other functions, depending on engine type. These include keeping the motor oil contained, usually hermetically or nearly hermetically, providing the rigid structure with which to join the engine to the transmission, and in some cases, even constituting part of the frame of the vehicle. Two-stroke engines In two-stroke gasoline engines, the crankcase is sealed and is used as a pressurization chamber for the fuel-air mixture. As the piston rises, it pushes out exhaust gases and produces a partial vacuum in the crankcase, which aspirates fuel and air. As the piston travels downward, the fuel-air charge is pushed from the crankcase into the cylinder. Unlike four-stroke gasoline engines, the crankcase does not contain engine oil because it handles the fuel-air mixture. Instead, oil is mixed in with the fuel, and the mixture provides lubrication for the cylinder walls, crankshaft and connecting rod bearings. A majority of ships today use two-stroke diesel engines with the crankcase completely separated from the cylinders. Unlike smaller engines, they usually have a separate tank below the crankcase as an oil-holding tank. Four-stroke engines In a four-stroke engine, the crankcase is filled mainly with air and oil and is largely sealed off from the fuel-air mixture by the pistons. Equals oil circulation equals, oil circulation is kept separate from the fuel-air mixture, thereby preserving oil rather than burning it as happens in two-stroke engines. Oil moves from its reservoir, is pressurized by an oil pump, and is pumped through the oil filter to remove grit. The oil is then squirted into the crankshaft and connecting rod bearings and onto the cylinder walls, and eventually drips off into the bottom of the crankcase. In a wet sump system, oil remains in a reservoir at the bottom of the crankcase, referred to as the oil pan. In a dry sump system, oil is instead pumped to an external reservoir. Even in a wet sump system, the crankshaft has minimal contact with the sump oil. Otherwise, the high-speed rotation of the crankshaft would cause the oil to froth, making it difficult for the oil pump to move the oil which can starve the engine of lubrication. Small amounts of oil may splash onto the crankshaft during rough driving, referred to as windage. In a wet sump system, the main dipstick reaches to near the bottom of the crankcase. The oil filler cap covers a hole in the crankcase where oil can be added. It is typically located on the top of the rocker cover. Equals air ventilation equals. During normal operation, a small amount of unburned fuel and exhaust gases escape around the piston rings and into the crankcase, referred to as blow-by. If these gases had no controlled escape mechanism, the gasketed joints would leak. Also, if the gases remained in the crankcase and condensed, the oil would become diluted and chemically degraded over time, decreasing its ability to lubricate. Condensed water would also cause parts of the engine to rust. To counter this, a crankcase ventilation system exists. In all modern vehicles, this consists of a channel to expel the gases out of the crankcase, through an oil-separating baffle, to the PCV valve, into the intake manifold, 
In a non-turbo engine, the intake manifold is at a lower pressure than the crankcase, providing the suction to keep the ventilation system going. A turbo engine usually has a check valve somewhere in the tubing to avoid pressurizing the crankcase when the turbo produces boost. If an engine is damaged or enters old age, gaps can form between the cylinder walls and pistons, resulting in larger amounts of blow-by than the crankcase ventilation system can handle. The gaps cause power loss, and ultimately mean that the engine needs to be rebuilt or replaced. Symptoms of excessive blow-by include oil being pushed up into the air filter, out the dipstick, or out the PCV valve. In rare cases of serious piston or ring damage, the oil filter housing's sheet metal can even burst at its seam. Open crank engine, early internal combustion engines were of the open crank style, that is, there was no enclosed crank case. The crankshaft, connecting rod, camshaft, gears, governor, etc. were all completely exposed and could be viewed in operation when the engine was running. This made for a messy environment, as oil was thrown from the engine and could run on the ground. Another disadvantage was that dirt and dust could get on moving engine parts, causing excessive wear and possible malfunction of the engine. Frequent cleaning of the engine was required to keep it in normal working order. See also, Tunnel Crankcase References <laughs>